Hi, this is Prios and I'm a professional gambler. Today we are gonna explore what the gambling industry don't want you to know. And apparently an informer will tell us. This is a video originally posted by Wise, but yeah, I also know one or two things about the gambling industry and let's see what this guy will talk about. So let's waste no more time and jump into it. Gambling is used extensively all over the world to launder money. Now, if I was to estimate, based on the amount of accounts I've seen of that nature, it would have to be millions and millions of dollars that are laundered every year. It's just a scam. The fact that nobody can win, we only want losing customers. That's it. It was just fucked. In that yeah, that's definitely true. We only want losing customers. I learned this lesson. Um, on my own, on myself. I mean, I am basically banned on every uh, sports book. I'm banned on every casino. I'm banned all over the place. That's because we only want losing customers. And I also heard the rumors that um, this is a paradise for people money laundering. Uh, because let's say you have very high limits. Let's say you can bet 500k on a single bet. Then you just bet on the one outcome on the one side and the other outcome on the other side. And the losing bet you don't tell anyone, but the winning bet you yeah obviously say, oh, cool, I, I won 500k here. Tax office, 500k, tax free. This was from gambling. And yeah, I also think that the casinos might be used to uh, wash uh, money, uh, to launder money. Because yeah, it's... I think it's, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's just a rumor. I think probably not that all of, or a lot of these Maltese and Curacao casinos are meth mafia territory and used for such illicit purposes. But yeah, I can't give you the source anymore because I don't remember, but I also read and heard that a lot already. So let's continue. They know what advertising works, what algorithm works, they know how to maximize their profit, which is to get people to lose more and more. It is just rotten to the core. Yeah, I think they also, it's not that they make most of the money from like recreationals who come in there and lose five, 10, 20 bucks here and there. The most of the money comes from addicts who compulsively gamble and lose hundreds of thousands or at least way more than they can afford to lose and their life is destroyed and also the life of their relatives because they often steal and borrow money telling lies and actually use the money for gambling while they might say that it is for a health thing or something else, making up his excuses where they know their family would give them money. I was a customer account supervisor at one of the biggest gambling companies in the world. With 21st century technology, the punter doesn't really know what's going on. And behind the scenes, there's all of this maths going on that analyzes your betting and ensures the company wins. It will always win. I disagree. I mean, they have very uh, sophisticated um, systems in place, so that it's very hard to beat them. They also have the house edge in place all the time. So usually you are fighting against the house edge, but there are ways and loopholes to overcome that, but they usually are very good to recognize customers that do that. Oh, this guy here. <laughs> And then they will ban him. And it's even worse than that, actually. Often, they will not even pay me back. They not even, sometimes they give the deposit back, but most of the time they keep the deposit and the winnings. And often, it's also sort of a free roll. They let me do my thing. And if I run out the money, they just don't give it to me. And if I lose, it's fine. I can make another deposit and another deposit and once I eventually win, we will say, fuck off, we keep the money. You are like a pro gambler that's against our terms, something like that. Customers would be categorized based on their profitability. So if 
A customer lost millions of dollars. They would be labelled a VIP and only the best staff would talk to them. But if you were a problem customer, that meant that you were winning money. So you'd be labelled with a big badge that said that you're a problem and that needs to be dealt with. I mean, we usually just deal with it by excluding the guy. If you are lucky and playing on one of the very reputable sites, you get your money. And if you play on one of the, the more shitty sites, they just keep the money and just say fuck off. And often they also stop uh, communicating completely and just ignore you and don't expect any help from um, the regulators. I mean, I think there's one good regulator. I agree, I agree. <laughs> there's one good regulator. That's the UK Gambling Commission. All others are shit. I mean, the Malta Gambling Commission, the gam it's MGA, so Malta Gambling Authority, is in Europe. And you would expect this to be reputable too, but it's complete shit. I tried so many complaints with them. And most of the time, it's just getting completely ignored. You never receive any answer. Or they, they write you an email saying, oh, um, we are dealing with it. And then nothing happens ever, basically. You can remind them, but at some point, they just stop communicating. The, also, sometimes they say, yeah, we have these independent conflict resolution providers or something like that it's called. Basically, a third party who is handling the conflicts. And if you send the complaint to them, they say, okay, we are going to investigate. And then after like three weeks, they say, yeah, you, they are right. You don't get the money. Even if it's like complete horse shit, then, yeah, I mean, I had many cases, also now many people had, who had cases against them, where they just took the money saying something like, yeah, he's a professional gambler. That's against our terms. You are only allowed to uh, use our site in a recreational way. I mean, what, what the fuck does this, this even mean? I think in, in, in this in reality means that they just keep the money if someone wins too much and say, fuck off, uh, you are a pro. The risk rating is done by an algorithm. It's just how much they've lost against whatever other metrics the company's decided. The risk rating essentially turns off winners. By the way, this algorithm is extremely flawed and not working well because I often get into this VIP programs as well. The thing is, if you find loopholes, you often play in a way that is very high variance. And if you are unlucky and losing a lot, although you're using a winning system, then you will get VIP, although you should be banned. But the problem is then that once you start winning and maybe even get into the profit, then they will just say, as already mentioned, fuck off, we keep your money, you're a pro, you are exploiting the system. I mean, even if you are completely within their rules, they, they will just fuck you over. And stops them from betting and cranks up the dial for anybody that's losing so they can lose more and more and more money. It's actually a design feature to ensure that those that lose are allowed to lose more. So if a customer says something that could indicate they've got a problem with gambling, you would just have to go through a series of questions and just tick, 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 and that was it. Suicide calls were to be dealt with by only a senior manager, but I had a manager tell me that they just had to make a decision based on the threat and stick to it, and that it didn't matter once they hung up the phone because they didn't know whether or not they followed through with their threat or not, so that it didn't really matter. So that's probably still the worst thing I've ever heard anybody say, because you don't know whether or not they killed themselves or not. It didn't matter. I think they just... Don't give a shit, to be honest. And they are also constantly lying. The thing also is the casino stuff. I mean, often it's not even that they have bad intentions. I think often it is just complete incompetence. It's, it's almost impossible to deal with these guys. Often they just have a chat or an email supply. And they, these are very low-level guys who cannot decide anything and who have not a clue about anything whatsoever. They get paid like two $2 an hour or even less. And they just send standard replies all the time.
And if it's not non-standard thing, you will not get any good resolution whatsoever. And yeah, that's my experience. These casinos, I, I don't know even how they could survive. The only explanation is that they loan the money for someone because they are so bad. Well, I also don't know what a normal customer would do. I mean, I'm used to de dealing with that, but that's most of the time of my day uh, when I am gambling, dealing with these customer support agents and stuff and, and emails and all the shit. And by the way, regulations by now, I think, is, is, is get, are getting better because... Yeah, the affordability checks and stuff are more strict now and people get restricted very quickly. And I think that's mostly because of law. I mean, it's not that strict on all the shitty sites, but on the sites that are regulated by the only real regulator, the UK Gambling Commission, they are very strict and often they put, they have like auto settings that are only limited, limit you to lose a certain amount i mean i think this amount is still way too high for most people but if you are wealthy it's not that bad actually well let's take germany when you are regulated you are only allowed to use to lose 1k a month and this is even for all bookies combined and i mean this threshold is still set way too high obviously because most people cannot afford to lose 1k gambling a month but for someone who's making like 10k and who is addicted, this might help. Although, actually probably not because there are still all the illegal sites that don't care about any limits and let you play whatever and however and how much you ever you want. And even the Malta ones are not that much better. I mean, they have some affordability checks, but to be honest, they don't help much. So yeah, but it's getting better a bit, but because it's spread worldwide and you don't have the same regulation all over, it's, it is very hard to get this problem, uh, problem under control. It's an industry known thing. Gambling is used extensively all over the world to launder money. The company would treat customers different depending on what country they were from. If there was a whole heap of customers in England signed up with similar details, that would be a suspected syndicate of people trying to get one up on the company. I raised things of a similar nature in countries in South America and... Yeah, that's true. I also know about syndicates in England and yeah, these guys are, are often more sophisticated than the sites themselves and they make money and yeah, that's because they have very good prediction systems for sports bet, for example. They also have like runner systems going in all to the, all the betting shops and placing bets for them and this can most of the time done anonymously and yeah. I mean, I think everyone who is fucking these guys does a good thing, but yeah, that's like, I, 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 it's, it must be very hard for a legitimate casino to make any money because these pros gonna destroy them. And there are also some other smart guys. So there need to be a lot of other people addicted spewing off money in order to make it profitable. Or they need to be... I mean, I, I talked about a leg legitimate casino, so for them it's really hard to get along. All of those accounts will... Obviously, this is... The, the profits are made on the back of the problem customers, the guys who have a gambling problem. That's it. And yeah, the other thing of the coin is they have to get rid of all the customers who are smart. And yeah... So they need a, a system to, to keep the, uh, the, the customers who are losing and yeah, also promote them and make sure that they stay on their side and not go anywhere else. And then they need a good way to find out who, is, who are the smart guys and then ban them. Waved through and that happened multiple times. When you get 20 individuals join up within a space of 20 minutes or with matching email addresses and account numbers, it's quite obvious. 
This is stupid. I mean, no syndicate is behaving like this. They, they now they are shit. I mean, this is just stupid. They then they do it smarter. Then it's not that easy to determine. But but obviously you have some patterns. But there will be different accounts for different people. They will just have people giving away their details for some amount of the profit or something. So these are all real existing people who are like gaming the system. But yeah, not, not such uh, obvious mistakes will be made. Systemic tactic to launder money. If I was to estimate based on the amount of accounts I've seen of that. I, I don't know why he's bringing money laundering into the picture all the time. I mean, the syndicates are not necessarily laundering money. They are just gaming the system and having loopholes or are better in determining prices of bets. And that's how they try to make their money. Nature, it would have to be millions and millions of dollars that is laundered every year. And that's just that company alone. Maybe he's not familiar with the term money laundering. Money laundering means that you have money from criminal enterprises and then you try to make it like white money, but you can use it normally. I mean, let's take the drug dealer who gets like, whatever, 100 bucks on the corner of the street for selling meth. And then you need to make this money white and somehow get it into the system. And yeah, this could be done through betting, but yeah. This, but what he is explaining has not that much to do with money laundering, I think, so far. Or I was not paying enough attention. Or, or this is just a cut badly and a lot of important stuff is uh, yeah, left out. When you realize that the company doesn't care about people, it makes you feel appalled and sort of disgusted within yourself because you know... They are obviously not caring. They want the money of the guys, so they couldn't care less. That's, that's obvious for everyone who has a, a working brain. That you're helping a company harm people and virtually deliberately harm people because the culture is that it's all about revenue. I mean, that's not always harm. Let's say... Um, there are some people who just enjoy gambling and if they have it under control and just lose like five bucks here and there, this is not too bad. So they have a product and people pay for it. That's fine. The problem is when they exploit the problem gamblers, in, in my eyes. Another thing is, for example, poker. Poker, people play against each other and yeah, you try to win money from other humans. At least that's supposed to be. I mean, not talking about bots or something here. But in a leg legitimate online poker game, there should be only humans sitting there and playing against each other. And then these guys, the casino industry, has the platform where, they, where the games are running. And they take rake for that. That's a legitimate product, to be honest. I mean, it's still like a predatory environment where... People go after each other trying to get the money off the other one. But I, I, at least the rules are clear. And everyone knows, okay, these are not my friends. They want my money. And it's the same what you think when you play poker. So, yeah, that's... But it's, it's not complete criminal and bullshit. All of that, but most of that. Because in the end, it comes down... It's, it's not like... A, business that's just offering a product but in the end it comes down to exploiting the weakest guys the guys addicted that are the weakest in mind and yeah can't control their, themselves there are some whales where all the money is made from and these suffer very badly it ruins people's lives it takes their money it ruins their families the Staff, either indoctrinated or miserable. And then on top of it all, it's changed what sport is. If you're about to get into punting, make no mistake about it. You can't win. None of these companies will allow you to win. That's not true. 
I know people who made hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions um, sports betting. So that's not true. But the thing is, your accounts will be very short living. You, you can use them for sometimes just for one bet. But if you are lucky, they let you, they let you play for like some days, maybe even weeks. And these, this time you can make some money. If you only deal with legitimate companies or if you are in the UK where you have very good uh, legal system to go after them, you will get your money. But the problem is you will run out of accounts very quickly. That's why all these syndicates come into play. They pay other people for their data, uh, basically giving them their, like, their ID and stuff, opening accounts for them. And then they are allowed to use these accounts for a share of the profits, for example. So if you want to keep the system running, I mean, in the, on the Gemlas, from the Gemlas perspective, you need to multi-account and constantly get fresh accounts. This also means getting a new computer, a new IP address and a new internet connection because otherwise they could identify you quicker and determine that it's the same guy actually placing the bets. But if you follow the steps I just said, then you can make a lot of money. You just need fresh accounts all the time. So, I mean, not admitting or saying that I did anything like that, but I know people who do, and I know how it works. In the long run. So just don't bother. That's it. Okay, that, that was not very impressive. This video is just bad. It's, it's just bad, to be honest. It's bad, it's worse cut, it's not having the information, it's simplified. I don't like it, to be honest. This is, this is not give good information, but I hope my commentary helps to put this into perspective. Yeah, I, yeah, that was fun. I would have watched this anyways. Now you have my thoughts as well to go with it. Yeah, unfortunately, no, no one in chat or something. So we'll end the session here. Like, subscribe, share if you watch this on YouTube. Consider to follow me on Twitch and Twitter as well. Only on Twitch you can see me live and also ask questions. Yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Good luck at the tables. Don't gamble, at least not with an advantage. And fuck these guys whenever you can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.